This is the second screencast over um, stress. So this is part two of the stress. Uh, what we're looking at here is how people respond to stress. And Hans Selye did a 40-year longitudinal research project. Um, he studied animals as well as human beings and their reactions to a stressful event. And he found that essentially humans and animals, um, no matter what the animal, they react in the same basic way. And there's essentially three different parts or phases uh, to their reaction. The first phase is the alarm reaction. And this is when the immediate stressor uh, occurs. And that's when the body kind of takes over. The heart rate increases, blood's diverted uh, from various body functions to the muscles that are needed to react. Uh, the human or the animal, you know, readies itself to meet the challenge uh, of whatever that stress is uh, through the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so everything's kind of keyed up, ready to go. And you can see, if we look at this particular area of the chart, that you know, it, it's kind of like we take an initial hit and our body kind of becomes depleted for a second, but then we, we charge up and we're ready to go. And then we, re, uh, we enter into the resistance phase. And that's this area here. And what takes place during that time is that the body remains physically ready to deal with the situation. Uh, hormones are produced that helps the body stay you know, kind of ready for whatever needs to be done. And, you know, that continues. And we really kind of optimize during a certain point there. But eventually, if this time period keeps going on, if the stress continues for a long time period, you can see that sooner or later, we're going to run out of energy. We're just going to, we're going to kind of become depleted. And that leads us to the third phase, which is exhaustion. And that's when uh, the body just becomes exhausted. And in this time period, we are much more um, vulnerable to disease and, and uh, you know, sickness, things of that nature, uh, because our body just can't fight off whatever uh, illnesses and things come around. So it doesn't matter whether it uh, may be paperwork, that you're dealing with or whether it be studying or um, something to do with uh, uh, athletics or whatever the stressor is the longer it goes if we have to continually maintain that alertness and readiness you know to act sooner or later our body's going to give out so uh, that's Hans Selye and the general adaptation syndrome Let's talk about real quick the effects of stress and the effects of stress can be varied um, we talk about psychosomatic symptoms and psychosomatic symptoms are real physical symptoms uh, things like uh, stomach or muscle pain fatigue uh, headaches uh, eating problems insomnia you know those types of things those are real physical symptoms but they're caused by psychological factors in other words doctors cannot pinpoint any particular physical cause for those things but eventually you know what we found out is that stress is linked to these things so stress is a psychological uh, thing that's causing the physical ailments the results so those are psychosomatic symptoms now this has a negative effect on the immune system as well um, evidence shows basically that uh, any increase in stress will weaken the immune system and so once again our chance of getting colds or strep throat or the flu anything along those lines increases uh, the more often we are under stress. Now, this brings us to stress management. 
And when we talk about stress management, there's a variety of factors that kind of come into play. One is how much perceived control that we have. And research shows that if we at least feel like we have some control over the situation, well then we will tend to experience less stress. But it's in situations where we feel we may be totally out of control. We may not have any control over the situation at all. Let's say a person gets bad news about a health situation and there's nothing they can do and they're totally dependent upon uh, doctors, nurses, and, and medical techniques that you know they can't control, then they're going to experience more stress in those situations. Now, we've also found that optimism and pessimism, your attitude about uh, the stressful scenario, can contribute to um, you know how likelihood how likely you are to get sick or or have issues um, health problems things like that martin seligman he has actually done research uh, into what he calls positive psychology and positive psychology is the study of optimal human functioning you know what what do we need for you know to be to basically be able to function at our very best and the thing, the thing, excuse me, that he really looks at in this are things like positive emotions, uh, positive character, positive groups, communities, culture, all of the influence that, influences that come into play. And optimism and pessimism, those, you know, optimism obviously is one of those things. So let's take a look. I'm going to show you some research here. Uh, this research was done just recently at our very own IUPUI, and it's research on optimism. And what they found is that the more optimistic an individual is, the less distress and the more positive emotions that that person experiences when they're faced with an adversity. So they experience less stress or less perceived stress and you know we're talking about people you know for example cancer patients coronary patients uh, new moms people like that that are in situations where they could have either a good or a bad attitude going into it and the better their attitude is the less distress the and the more positive things that happen okay They've also found that the higher the optimism, the more adaptive coping mechanisms that people are able to do. So, for example, people who are very optimistic, they tend to be, uh, you know, more problem focused. They they work on uh, dealing with the situation and and challenging whatever the stressor happens to be. Uh, they accept the reality of the scenario and uh, they spend a lot less time trying to figure out ways to escape or avoid or even deny uh, the existence of the stressor or of the problem that they're facing. So, uh, you know, the main point of this is optimism definitely uh, can help people deal with stress and, and with adversity. And then the last thing we're going to look at, again, you know, in terms of stress management, you know, your personality. We talked about optimistic, uh, optimism and pessimism as far as attitudes. Well, your personality types can also uh, have an impact on how you deal with stress. A, a very old theory that uh, basically just divided people into two different types of personality uh, people were either considered a type A or a type B personality. This has to do with, you know, how people deal with stress as well. A type A individual was somebody who was extremely impatient. Uh, they were very competitive people. They uh, displayed a lot of anger, irritation. Uh, they were frequently um, upset at various things that were going on. Um, they were constantly worried about time schedules and things like this. Those people tended to have a much greater chance of having heart disease and chronic illnesses. On the other hand, type B 
personalities were people who were much more calm. They had relaxed attitudes. Uh, they, they didn't let every single thing get to them. And they tended to have a whole lot less stress. So um, I know my, my mom was not a type A individual. She was not, you know, a strict type A, but my mom was the type that she would worry. She would stress herself out over everything. And if there wasn't something to worry about, she'd create something to worry about. So, you know, I kind of learned from her not to do that. And I would recommend to you, you know, don't worry about things that don't even exist right now or that, that aren't a problem right now. Um... You know, I, I kind of have my own philosophy. Why worry about something until there's something to worry about? So, um, you know, a lot of times people will get all upset about things that might happen. Well, don't worry about things that might happen. Uh, wait until they do happen, and then you can deal with them. So, now, this brings us to the very last thing, and that is stress relievers. How do you deal with stress? Each and every person needs to have their own way of dealing with stress, um, whether it be through painting, through dancing, exercise, playing sports, uh, beating up a bobo doll, um, something. You need to have some way to release that stress because stress can become internal. Okay, we've talked about how you know we kind of internalize it; it can become anxiety. And you've got to be able to get it out, okay? We talked about those psychosomatic symptoms, um, you know, things like uh, migraines and, you know, various types of, you know, uh, like cold sores or uh, ulcers or a variety of things like that. Those are psychosomatic symptoms that, that result from stress. You have to have ways to get rid of the stress to be able to avoid this kind of stuff. You know, different people have different stress levels. Some people are overwhelmed at a very small amount of stress, and then other people can deal with a lot. But no matter how much you can deal with, you got to find ways to deal, uh, to, to kind of release it. Whether it be, you know, running, going out running for an hour a day, or... Maybe you can't do an hour a day, so you do, you know, 20 minutes a day. Uh, anything at all. You know, whether you write poetry uh, as a way to kind of release tension, you know, you got to find something. So I would encourage each one of you, try to determine what it is that you can do that, that really gives you kind of a peace of mind and kind of puts you in, in, in a nice, uh, calm place where you can kind of get rid of those worries. And uh, you've got to find something because otherwise it's, it's negative to your health.